It's, uh, you know, these days it's not the same. You know, it, when I started, uh, cars had generators and points and, you know, uh, distributors, you know. I mean, you looked on the hood, it was pretty much empty. It was a carburetor and a distributor and a generator. That was pretty much it. A fan, maybe that was it. And now it looks like the dissection of some animal. You know, you <laughs> all <laughs> these things, all the points, it's all full, you can't get anything. And they got computers in them, yeah. Um, if you have a second, I was reading about Smart Grid, and they're talking about putting broadband signal into the grid, and supposedly that's going to create a big problem <coughs> for ham radio. It's a horrible problem in the ham. And, okay, so you know how <coughs> it's good to join the NRA, right? Yeah. <laughs> AR, that would be a good thing to do. So if you are ham radio acronym, you're going to get a magazine, you're going to join the ARR, <coughs> American Radio Relay. And they've got people watching and pushing and fomenting all kinds of unrest. Believe this a little bit. And uh, you're, you're absolutely right. It's, a, it, it's stupid beyond belief. The people that push it don't understand anything about engineering. It's so bizarre. Take cable television, right? You've got coaxial cables and they run all around the neighborhood so you can have, you know. The laws for that are extremely strict. If you leak 0.0001% of your signal, you're gigged for it. They're going to come and get you. And the operators have these little little thing they put on, I think it's a two or three hundred megahertz signal in some place where you know there's nothing on. And they go down the cable, if they hear anything, they've got to tighten the connection and make it shiny and fix it. And, so they don't leak any signal, right? Compare that to broadband over the power lines, BPL. We don't want this, BPL, broadband over the power lines. You take two wires like this on a, on a cross arm on a telephone pole, and you put the signal on it. And as I explained in my class, if you have a loop, How well the loop radiates is the fourth power. What that means is if you make the loop twice the area, it's going to be 16 times more effective radiating signal. Now, you take power lines that are what, you know, several feet apart and hundreds of feet long, that's a huge area. And it means all the signals they put on there just radiate out the air and clobber the ham radio. Now, some companies, now remember I told you you have these ham radio bands? There's one at, at 1.8 megahertz and one at, at, at three and a half and seven and 10 and 14 and 21 and there's a bunch of them. Okay. Well, what they did was, I mean, I've got to hand it to them. They don't want to trash the ham radio stuff. So what they did is they made their thing work like this. They have all these notches in it. So they, they transmit everywhere, but they carefully notch out where all the hand bands are. Well, it, it helps. You know, with a proper But, but it, it's stupid. It's stupid. Not we have fiber optic cables. We have twisted pairs. I mean, I'm getting 2.6 megabits a second at the cabin at Donner Lake over a phone line. I mean, come on. You know, that's huge. Uh, but, you don't. I don't think we need people. I hope it doesn't go through. They started in some areas, huh? Mama. Yeah, and it's unbelievable. I mean, you can just you can sure have a mobile Mama? radio in your car and you drive under it. Not We're talking. <laughs> That's all you. Know. <clears throat> and of course, when you talk, Mama. <coughs> their system. Would you? <laughs> I mean, it's you know, it's a free country, right? <laughs> <laughs> So there, there is an antidote to it. All right, now, ham radio. Um, if you want to become a ham radio actor, you've got to memorize a bunch of questions. If you're an engineer, it's no problem. It's trivial. Tim, it's, 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 it's sort of like, all right, if you've got uh, you know, seven spades and seven clubs, then you're not going to bid hearts, right? I mean, you know, it's for sure. I mean, I mean, it's easy for us. For you guys, it, the questions won't be easy, but you're safe. All you need is a little personal motivation. 
they have a fixed set of questions that they ask. <laughs> <laughs> you memorize the questions. If it says Labaskas and Lamanastash, you read that, you say, oh yeah, 12. Yeah, I knew that. You know, I mean, it's easy. It's easy. It, it, you have to put some energy. It's like anything you want to do. You put some energy in it. You don't hit targets by accident. You practice. You practice. You, there's a lot of things you have to do right and so you just spend a little energy and time on it, and you can do it. It's not hard to do. They used to require that we knew, do new Morse code, and that was a big stopper uh, from Citizens Band. Now, everyone knows if you're part of a group, right, those other guys, they're bad. We're great, they're bad. You know, 49ers, Rams, ah, uh, you know what I mean, you know, <laughs> Well, there's the ham radio operators and the CB operators, right? And so if you're a ham radio operator, it's called children's band. <laughs> so, it, but we're all proud of what we do and what we have, and, and I'm sure that they're proud too. And, uh, but, uh, so, so, what, so you memorize these questions, okay, and you get your exam. Yeah, go ahead. And they're multiple choice too. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, it's multiple choice. I mean, you know, and but but you you know all the choices because they're all printed out there for you, anyhow, right? I mean, it's the yeah, same multiple choices. It's the same. I mean, you know, you you get to read the questions. Hey, it's like it's like my midterm exam. Yeah. So I get I put ten questions on the exam. I give I give the questions on the, on the exam before they take the thing. I do it. Yeah, but they're not multiple choice. No. They're not. <laughs> it's not, once in a while they're true and false. So you have to have a license to be in here. You have to be licensed. Oh, thank you. I should have said that. Yeah, you have to have a license to transfer. If you don't have to have a trans uh, license to receive, it's, uh, so, you know, to, I mean, just to get started, you can buy the thing, but you're not supposed to talk, right? <laughs> Where do you go to get the license? <clears throat> no, hang up. No, no. Uh, well, volunteer exam. Let me get into that. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll talk about okay. That. All right. Robert, we'll cover that. All right. Now, everyone has different things they like to do. I like the square dance. Some people don't like the square dance. Some people would rather go shoot guns. <laughs> but whatever. You know, you got stuff you like to do. All right. And so. In, in ham radio, there are so many different things. Some guys, I mean, we used to we had World War II teletypes. We transmit the teletype. And now there's guys that love transmitting TV. And you transmit, but, but it has to be very slow. It's called slow scan. And uh, you can send a picture. And uh, there's emergency communications. I mean, if you're really good, probably Robert and Tim only. But you can bounce your signal off the moon. <laughs> we do that. Uh, there's there's all kinds of nets where people meet weekly or daily. That you get to know the people. They provide some community service. Uh, one of the things I was into for a while is when people go sailing out in the Pacific with their ham radio license on a yacht in the middle of nowhere. And they check into this net. Mommy? And, and uh, I'll pass messages back because you, you're not going to use your Mommy? cell phone in the middle of the city. <laughs> Mommy? And, and the satellite radio is extremely expensive, several dollars a minute. You know, yeah. And uh, so we uh, have a little jiggery pokery that we hook the ham radio into the telephone. And we do what we call phone patches. I did a lot of that in the, in the 60s for for GIs that were stationed out in the Pacific no, Ocean. Right the bird, the bird. And we're up on the hill, and uh, the guys who want to talk home, well, I just had a little jiggery poker into the uh, telephone line, and when anything the guy said over the radio from Guam came into Berkeley, went on the phone line to Mississippi, you know, and I call collect, and they know what it's all about. You know, it worked out well. Worked out well. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, we still do that, all phone patches. And, but I mean, there's so many things you can do. Some people get more fun out of building it than using it. <laughs> That's funny.